Ace Podcast. You are listening to the Crazy Town Podcast, Season 1, Episode 9, with special guest hosts Jeff and Cade, the creators of the comedy improv podcast, Super Pee Pee Time. I also want to give a shout out to all the listeners in Ashburn, Virginia. You guys seem to really be enjoying the show out there, and we love it. Also wanted to tell Ace Podcast Network thank you for letting us be a part of their network. You can see them over at acepodcastnetwork.com. Today on the show, we'll be discussing why there were thousands of red Skittles all over the freeway. We have two very special guest callers call into the show. All that, and that's about it today on the Crazy Town Podcast. Bang! Take three! <laughs> Hello, and welcome once again to another episode of the Crazy Town Podcast. I am your host, Jonas, and with me today is two very special guests, uh, the creators of the Super PP Time Podcast, Jeff and Cade. Why don't you go ahead and say hello to everybody? Hey, everybody. I'm Jeff. I'm Cade. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for coming in and collaborating with me today. Uh, do you want to go ahead and let everybody know where they can check your podcast out, where they can hear it, follow you, etc.? Sure, sure. It's uh, well, as you said, it's called Super PP Time, and if you find us on Twitter at Super PP Time, uh, we're on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, uh, Google Play, Snorkel, Podcast Listening. <laughs> no, no. Uh, trouble, Trouble, Wad Gong listeners. <laughs> uh, oh, you know, uh, well, Tune In Radio. We are on that. We're on whatever. Just look for Super PP Time. We're surprisingly the only podcast called that. You heard it there. Hear him on Troubled Gong Radio, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyways, I do, uh, we, do, we do have a great show for you guys planned. Well, I guess in our case, not planned for you today. But uh, we'll be uh, coming right back. If you aren't following us on Twitter, it's at the Crazy Town Pod. Our website, of course, is thecrazytown.com. It has all the ways to follow and listen to the show. And then we'll be uh, right back and get started on this episode of the Crazy Town Podcast. <laughs> Hi, this is Craig. And this is Aaron from Two Middle-Aged Dudes and a Microphone. You are listening to the Crazy Town Podcast. On the Ace Podcast Network. Okay, and we're back here at the Crazy Town Podcast. All right, guys, first I wanted to get into this weird fucking article I saw the other day um, about... It happened in Dodge County, Wisconsin. Uh, thousands of red Skittles spilled all across the highway, and it was a mystery. Like, the sheriff's office didn't know where it came from. So I thought the story was neat in general, but I guess my main concern is where the Skittles were actually headed. You guys have any guesses where you think these Skittles were headed? Well, my first question is, is this really something for the sheriff's department uh, to be dealing with? <laughs> doesn't seem like doesn't seem like a sheriff kind of a kind of a problem. But um, well, yeah. they called in the SWAT team originally in there. <laughs> Right. Then they just were like, let's just call it an airstrike. Let's just take them out. <laughs> like carpet bombed road. What they didn't know is these were outlaw Skittles. That's where they, they feel they feel. That's to right. That. Sure, sure. A rogue band of Skittles going to try to rob banks all across the country. That's that's the, mm -hmm. that's the hidden part of the story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but they were they were just born to lose. You know, these poor guys, they just didn't make it to the crime. It's a shame. It's really sad. It's, it's a sad it story is. for me. They just yeah. ended up melted into the fucking tar of the road just oh like, you know yeah. all the woodland creatures from around there just went crazy on that are crap. just spastic <laughs> funny you should mention that because where they were actually going was to a farm to be fed to cows yeah what? see that that doesn't sound that doesn't no, wait sound... a minute they're, they're not gonna eat that they're not gonna eat it i i didn't believe it either but what what this article said is that they were the rejected skittles so like the fucking ones nobody <laughs> oh, wanted. oh no <laughs> that's like the greatest skittle all... that ever happened kind of tastes like you're eating a toy so <laughs> right exactly so how could they be any worse the worst that? ones yeah. yeah the rejected skittles you mean every one that's ever been manufactured <laughs> this is right. the most horrible candy right. in the history of candy 
Yeah, our bodies reject every even the ones we eat. Our bodies reject them instantly. <laughs> they come out in full form. They just you just yeah. shit skittles out. Exactly. <laughs> I d- which I don't which could, I suppose could be a source of uh, income. You could just resell them, I guess. Maybe that's I what I don't they understand. Do. Skittles. I mean, it just seems like when they're making candy, they just phoned that in when they made that. It just tastes like it's just some sugar, and they just put a coating on it and just said, "All right, ship it out." <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, about is, right. We're tired of thinking of candy. Like <laughs> we did, We've we been did at stuff this with like long. fruit flavors. We did it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's time to retire. It's time. Like I don't have the love of the game anymore. I just, I just really, want to make. Anybody a- really like Skittles? I, uh, I'm gonna, no I'm one gonna, ever. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out on a limb here. I kind of like Skittles a little. Like oh, three flavors. come on! You're lying to yourself. <laughs> it's, you're you denying yourself like much better candies. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I tell myself that every single day when I eat them. I, I, I like I eat them in the corner, like crying, like in the crying game. Like I just found out, like, yeah, like yeah. my girlfriend was a man, sort of situation. Sure. 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 Yeah, you just found out that those M and M's were in fact Skittles. It was, I, the, uh, it was the original draft of the crying game. Yeah. When I find out that my girlfriend is a man, I like Three Musketeers personally. <laughs> right. Then you. That's just how I roll. Ones. Yeah, I feel like I got to go all the way to Snickers, or it doesn't bring me back from the from the, the sadness. <laughs> but. You know, we all have our limits, I suppose. So, anyways, so like they lit- this farmer farmer literally said these were going to his farm because they are cheap carbs. So I guess that like Skittles sell these to the farmers. It says they would sell them to the farmers, or they just end up in a landfill. <laughs> <laughs> so like that's a really broad, like one side to the other fucking argument. Yeah, yeah, either. Either they're going to feed the thing that you're going to feed your family, or we're just going to throw it in the garbage and it'll stay there till the end of time and not change. Yeah, these are these are the should, two options. I think they should cut out the middleman on all Skittles and just put them right in the landfill. <laughs> just the production line goes right into the dump. <laughs> exactly, the conveyor yeah, the, belt just goes right into a rat's nest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they should make them there because then they don't have to spend the money on the truck to bring it straight to the dump. Mm-hmm. That's, That's it. Right. Really, would save a lot of money. Everybody wins. Yeah, yeah. I just don't understand. I, I thought I didn't think you could just feed just anything to an animal and they just eat it. I mean, this is not like grass at all. Right. I mean, well, it's you, the opposite of grass, really. But Kate, don't you have a dog? I mean, wouldn't that don't, wouldn't that eat anything in your house if given half a chance? Why, well, yes. <laughs> I don't know why I thought a cow would be different, though. Dude, I am totally with you. I totally thought that this was sounded like the most wrong thing in the world. Because well, I just think it sounds wrong to do it. I think it just sounds like, like, yeah, the cow's going to do it because they're morons, but you're supposed to be smart and not do that to the cow. Right. Right. Well, here's the argument I was I was looking on this later. It says, okay, so they have to they have to tell the consumer if it's a grass fed cow or like a or if it's like a um, or a skittle fed cow. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, like, do they have candy fed cow determination? <laughs> Like, that seems like you should relay that to con- to the consumer. Like, if little Jimmy's fucking pounding a steak filled with, like, Skittles blood, I mean, like, what the mm-hmm. fuck, dude? Well, that's all that he wants. I mean, that's like a little kid. He's like, yeah. I can have candy and a burger at the same time. That's all I've mm-hmm. ever wanted in life. They haven't. He hasn't had a lot of time to think about what he wants in life, I guess. But <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it, it it can't always it can't always be a winner, you know. <laughs> so no, here it gets fucking weirder, dudes. I uh, went and saw another article because this got me thinking. Like, what the fuck else do they feed cows across the world? There's a farm in Mayura Station in Australia. They have been around 171 years, so I guess they do shit. <laughs> That's their. Lo- that's actually their slogan. We do that's shit. Right. Yeah, they have it on a crest uh, in Latin. <laughs> I get. I guess we do shit. <laughs> above, above, like a lion, a, a lion ancest- and a dragon. Yeah, their ancestors shouted that when they rode into battle. <laughs> <laughs> They're on a horse with a suit of armor, screaming. Yeah. I guess we do shit. <laughs> yeah. They didn't do great in battle, but everybody thought they were real nice. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so this farm, they, they pride themselves because they they said their cows eat in and I quote the best Cadbury chocolate and gummy bears and other ingredients. The farmer says a happy cow is a good cow, but I have no fucking clue what that has to do with candy. 
Yeah, I have no I have no context for if a happy cow is in fact a good cow. I don't know. Well, and, yeah. And our our cows like what does a bad cow do? Like stand there like with a nasty look on his face? I mean, yeah. he aggressively looks at you. Smoking cigarettes and hanging around with fast <laughs> women and Yeah. Yeah, sure. Happy sure. cow is a good cow. You think he meant to say that? I feel like maybe that they got lost in Australian translation or something. It may have. <laughs> I'm just surprised, like that they're that they're talking about the best gummy bears as well, because like the worst Skittle, which is worse than anything else, is still slightly better than the best gummy bear. Yeah, <laughs> and gummy Every bears, I... gum, gummy bears are like insulation for your tub or something. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I keep going up the chain buying gummy bears. Like I, I'm like looking online for a thousand dollar gummy bears because every pack of gummy bears I've ever gotten, I open them, I, I check the date, they're always taste like they've been around for a couple of years well that's how that's how they they have to age them or else they're no good <laughs> they're man. Aged like a fine line yeah like sure. i read an article yesterday that uh in in kentucky there's more barrels of bourbon being aged than like actually be than there's actually people in the state or something <laughs> fucked up like that I, I I accept that ratio. So they have to like they have these warehouses full of like these ones are only six month old. We can't send those out to the stores yet because they have to get hard mm -hmm. when they're supposed to be soft and pliable. <laughs> yeah, we're not monsters. I mean, we're gonna send it out when it's ready. You know, we're gonna send it out when these things are just as horrible as they could ever possibly be, or else people won't recognize them as gummy bears. <laughs> right, exactly. They'd be like, "What is this? This tastes good. This isn't a gummy bear." Yeah, this is soft and delicious. No. Really, they always taste so tough, like tough, like beyond, like why did, why does, I don't get why people eat these things. <laughs> how how many have you had? Like you seem like you've actually tried it a lot, Kate. Like it seems well, like well, you're like well, continually I've got little trying. kids. Well, because I've got little kids and they always want uh, gummy bears, and I'm like, okay, we just opened that one. The date was it was manufactured yesterday. Let's try it again. <laughs> and no, it, it it tastes like leather. I mean, it has the texture, you know, of something industrial. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, like something that that you put between like your brake pads and your tire, or something like that. <laughs> I think it probably, would work if we did yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Could save you guys a lot of money down the road. Just replace all your brake mm. gummy bears. Yeah. yeah, we'd be would be dead, and then we don't have any more expenses. Exactly. That's the way it saves you money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when I heard they eat Cadbury chocolate. The first fucking thing that popped in my head is these ca these cows just eat those Cadbury Easter eggs all day. Like the farmer just sure. walks around and pops them in their mouth like a pill. And they That's get them all year round, yeah. That's why I can't find them in my grocery store. All those damn Australian cows are just bogarting them all the time. <laughs> Savages, <laughs> yeah, those, I'll tell you, dude. Those things are, yeah, those things are a little bit horrifying as well, only because it's like the size of your fist, and it's like essentially like shoving a baseball of sugar <laughs> into your... <laughs> And like trying to fit a baseball in your mouth made of sugar. I had delicious baseball. Sure. I like this thing. <laughs> well, well our, no, our, our, like all baseballs, it's delicious, of course. Thank you. Yes. What I thought, you know, w when you first said this, is I'm, I imagine there are cows out there in Australia saying, "Hey, you know, they're feeding us fine chocolate. This, things are turning around between us. Maybe they're not going to kill us and eat us after all." That's right. they're maybe, they're maybe they're trying to maybe they're trying to bang us like they're trying to <laughs> they're seducing they're, they're, they're us. trying to get like if the flowers if the flowers and the wine come in then all of a sudden then it gets really romantic for these cows i'm sure <laughs> they're growing That's... dandelions in the field and serving them chocolate on dishes and then they cut their fucking head off and take them to the goddamn butchering plant <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know you know they're their worst lives i suppose <laughs> right Right, I wish I was wined and dined and my head got chopped off. I mean, that would be pretty fucking <laughs> amazing, right? You could go on the internet and make that happen this afternoon. Yeah. Are you crazy? You could get that done today. I'm sure of it. Someone would come by. Yeah, just put it on Craigslist. Within an hour, I'd have like ten emails and phone calls. There'd be a line. There'd be a line down the block around your house. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, internet. It helps us connect to all the weirdos that are live in our area. It makes all the weirdos feel like they're normal because there's twenty other weirdos who like to do that too. Yes, Check. yes. Yeah, yeah, there's there's like a subgroup on Reddit just for people who chop people's heads off after feeding them Cadbury cream eggs in a field. <laughs> yeah, I saw a documentary, a, a lady, she's 600 pounds, and she she made a living off of guys sending her food and money to buy food so they could watch her eat online. Hmm. Oh. And, and, yeah. 
Wow, a, a lid for every pot, I guess. <laughs> As it were. <laughs> exactly. Well, the last little tidbit about this article, and that'll fucking be about it on it. So this farmer says he uses 10 tons of chocolate a week, right? So, what? right. Wow. <laughs> yes. Jesus I was Christ. And that's only three cows. <laughs> yes, yes. He only has <laughs> right. three cows at a time. That's right. He detonates them with chocolate and then <laughs> brings in a few more cows and just keeps jamming them in there. So what he said was a few years back, he stopped using chocolate. And he said the customers actually complained to him, but without telling them that they didn't eat chocolate anymore, complained to them that the meat tasted different. Different. Mm-hmm. So somehow the fucking chocolate like makes the beef better, according to this farmer. It works its way right into the steak parts of you. That that happened to me. I had a Big Mac, and I called McDonald's Corporation. I said, I think about two weeks ago, this cow may have had a different kind of feed than it usually has. And I feel like they heard me. Yeah, I had I had, actually, I had a different experience. I ate a Burger King burger a couple of years ago. It was the last time I ate there because when it came out, it smelled exactly as it did when it was going in. I was like... Nothing happened to this. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> what do you mean going into what? What do you mean? Go, going into my body, it t- it smelled like a, a Burger King burger. And as it was leaving, same exact story. I was like, really? my body my body didn't recognize this. <laughs> <laughs> it just passed it through like a, my body like a just kernel said, of corn. This isn't my problem. This isn't this isn't my area. It was just let it go. Yeah, through. your stomach was like, hey, listen, I'm giving this to you guys. Your intestines are like, no, we don't want no. that. No, we don't. This isn't our job either. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, I mean, that's really it about this article. I thought it was fucked up. I, I wanted to talk to you guys about see what you thought. I mean, you have any final thoughts about your about your cows potentially eating Skittles or chocolate as their fucking feed? I think we should yeah. talk to a couple of the cows. I think we should well, talk well, to a couple of the cows and see if they like it. I oh, do yeah. too, but, but first I want to say this. Uh, okay, so these people could tell when like they switched they could tell by the taste like when he just like switched the chocolate or or throttled back on the chocolate the question i have is what do we taste like like if a shark ate us would they be like oh this guy's been having a little bit too much onion you know what i mean <laughs> are right. we flavored that's i we have to be we have to yeah be. we have to be yeah like like you taste like target cupcakes somehow that's right yeah and sprite and they would know they would know that that's Kay's heavy into Target cupcakes. So I need to beware because those are delicious and and everyone wants to eat me, right? No, I don't think I don't think so. I think it means that you you, you want to eat me, you. don't you? Kind of. <laughs> hey, kind guys, of. guys, yeah, hey, hold in. on one second. I I think I think we have one of these cows on the phone. Hello? Oh my gosh! Oh, I don't know how the fuck he got a cell phone or whatever, but he's call- hello hello. Uh, uh, hello. Is this Hello? a cow that eats Skittles? Uh, well, I have a name. I mean, you don't have to. Oh, buddy, come over here. This guy just thinks we're a cow that eats Skittles. Excuse me, sir. I'm sorry for offending you. No, no, no. We're used to it. We're used to it. Uh, we, uh, they, they feed us all kinds of things. Terry, Terry, get on the line here. Okay, I'm here. They, they feed us, I mean, honestly, they, they tried a lot of things. They they, yeah. they, they fed us uh, bowling pin chips one, oh, one week. Those were pretty good. That was all right, but uh, they said that we tasted like uh, lamp juice afterwards. Mm-hmm. So oh. It was upsetting. Yeah. I'm a big connoisseur of lamp juice. What uh, what brand of lamp juice did you have? Uh, Mor- Morgan's Fields. Oh, that's the expensive <laughs> shit. They're treating you guys good over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, you, we do all right. You guys have had the chicken pot pie, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, they feed us uh, eagle pot uh, milk. <laughs> you know, uh, sometimes, they've, sometimes they'll feed us uh, uh, pigeon can uh, toast. Uh, oh, toast that's with uh, covered wagon sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, two days ago, I had some uh, jumbled macaroni pie with the side of uh, slits and tips. Have you guys ever had that? Uh, not exactly. Uh, they oh. gave us something similar to that. What did they give you, Terry? Uh, I had the spoons and guns. <laughs> Delicious. Yeah, they they uh, they did one time uh, give me a, a a handful like but like Andre the Giant handful of bullets and. Oh. Uh, and they, but they had uh, they had dipped them in in barbecue.
barbecue sauce, and then they had uh, they had so- so- uh, soiled themselves uh, during uh, during church that morning. Did that affect the flavor at all? Uh, well, it affected my enjoyment of them. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I have a couple friends who have cows, and they give them barbecue bullet surprise all the time. So that are you telling me you sure. had barbecue bullet surprise? Well, there was no surprise about it. I mean, there was no surprise at all. There was, it was, uh, it was. They were, they were very upfront about it. In fact, they were, they were kind of a jerk about it. Oh. Well, the, o- the only problem was uh, two days later when uh, my buddy uh, Frank had his uh, morning bowel movement. He shot me in the keister. It was pretty, uh, pretty rude. Oh. That's the surprise. <laughs> That's the surprise. Yeah. Oh, okay. So they got, they named the dish, and you're like, "Well, oh, it's a surprise. It was all normal." And then later on, you know, it hits you, or someone else, it hits you. I guess, Terry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you're, no, you're, I'm a, no, I'm on microphone. <laughs> you've, you've you've loaded yourself into a telephone sound now, uh, Terry. Yeah, well, I made it into this phone booth finally. I've been trying to cram myself in here. <laughs> you're doing like a, an old time college prank. Yeah, they usually have a one cow capacity, so it's it's pretty nice you were able to get in, Terry. I'm glad that you joined us. I was telling uh, Kate and Jeff uh, that I thought it just sounds like they're just shoving Cadbury eggs down your throat all day, along with all these tuna can casseroles and rum, rumble jelly sandwiches and everything. So, uh, uh-huh, have you uh-huh. ha- have you had the Cadbury eggs? Oh, uh, so good. Oh, you know, that's so funny because they don't say, they don't tell you what they are. You know, they don't tell you. They just, you open your mouth to ask, and in goes three more. And uh, you just have to just chew it for a half an hour, like, you know, like we do. I mean, we just chew stuff. That's uh, pre- pretty much, that's what I majored in at school, was standing and chewing. Ooh, it sounds like a, a good uh, good degree to go for. It was an excellent uh, program. Yeah, that was my minor, actually. Uh, I majored in uh, crossing over uh, bridges. Now, are there mm-hmm. many bridges on your farm? Because that sounds like you're really putting yourself in a corner with that degree there, Terry. Well, um, I just know that the career opportunities around here are, uh, you know, in that field. Yeah, I mean, a real field, an actual field. That oh, actual field. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Very interesting. Is it? Is it, though? Is it very interesting? Is it really interesting? I don't I mean, like the tone of his voice when he said I, that. I didn't care for it. I didn't yeah. care for that. It seemed yeah. it seemed sort of passive aggressive, like mm-hmm. like these cows don't know what the hell they're talking about. Yeah, we're very sensitive to those things, uh, Jonas. Huh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can we can feel uh, the vibrations in your in your tool belt area that uh, yeah. come out, and, uh, and and just you know we can we can tell emotionally if you are wondering what goes in store bought marinara sauce or not. We can tell but, just by the tone of your voice. I think he is too. I know he is. You guys are amazing. I really was just pondering what all goes into store bought marinara sauce. Now, yeah. now let's talk more about this gift. When did you first be, were you able to understand what people were thinking by their tool belt vibrations? Because I am wearing a tool belt as well. So of course you are. Of course yeah. you are. Yeah, we know. Yeah. Um, I was, uh, I was, uh, I don't know about you, Terry. I was, uh, I was stung by a, a, a sort of a poisonous bee that uh, had a, an extra uh, DNA strand in it that uh, strangely it evolved to give cows the ability to understand emotions. That's how I got it. Oh, what strand of poisonous bee? I've, I know there's plenty out there. What was the name of it? Uh, I think it was Ted. Um, I think his name was Ted. He didn't last long after, obviously. You know, they, 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 they sting you and then they die like idiots. Like, they could just not sting you and be fine. But this guy, he was committed to his career, you know. I fucking hate Ted bees. They're the fucking worst. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, for me, uh, I was when I got my gift, uh, I was a calf. Uh, I grew up in uh, Hawaii. Uh, it, it, it was hard to get here, let me tell you. Uh, I, I hitched a ride on a, a miniature uh, a jellyfish. Uh, he was really kind to get me to the mainland. I appreciated that. Uh, Wait, on the way. How did he? How did he tell you exactly? How did he tell you over? I mean, what, did you did you have a harness built, or how to do it? Uh, you know, I just was kind of balanced correctly. Um, <laughs> he had a, a kind of a prehensile uh, wang, and that helped a lot. Just, it always does. Just just to pass the time, you know. <laughs> it always helps. I mean, look, it always helps just to know it's there. You know, just for. <laughs> 
So what was the uh, approximate surface area of this jellyfish? If you were a calf, I would imagine it may have been a fairly large one. What, what would you owe your estimate? What was the square footage of that bitch? Well, you know, he was uh, only about four inches wide. Uh, but, you know, it was our relationship, uh, the way we bonded, that really got us across uh, the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, uh, well, and all the way across to the Pacific. Wow, you went across two oceans when you only had to go across one. I mean, while you're at it. I mean, when are you going to get back there? <laughs> you know, like, while you're in there, you might as well do all the oceans you're planning on doing because it's just never going to, you're never going to get the chance again. Yeah, we went across one and we're just like, screw it, you know, let's go for it. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter anyway, you know, it's just like, it's, I mean, that's, that's one of the great things, I don't know if you know this, Jonas, about us, is um, we have really, literally nothing on the calendar coming up. Not much that's going on. No, no, nothing on the schedule. So it's it's kind of open, you know, open time, really. It's all free swim for us. Actually, Frank, I see here, uh, not next Thursday, but the Thursday after, uh, we're supposed to uh, be surprised by a, a possum uh, having sex. Oh, oh, that's exciting. Yeah. So, but that's not this Thursday, right? No, no, the Thursday after. It's the Thursday after. Okay. Two-ish, about two. Okay. Okay, because because this this Thursday I had planned I was gonna make uh, uncomfortable eye contact with the farmer while I defecated. Oh really? Oh, were you were you gonna stand there angrily to show him that you really meant business? Is that like what you were gonna do? <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm gonna be angry, but it's definitely gonna get awkward. You know, it's gonna get uncomfortable because uh, I can maintain eye contact for an awfully long time. Oh. Well, and I wanted to also give you a heads up, Frank, because in a few minutes I'm going to go over there uh, in, by the pond and I'm going to see a shovel and think it's a snake for a minute. So I wanted to give you a heads up so you can pencil that in. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah, excellent. It's it's very uh it's very nice you guys have pre-planned surprises. I don't think uh, the humans really do that. It's usually <laughs> not a surprise anymore. You know, if, if if you fail to plan, you know, you, you, you plan to fail. I mean, that's, how are we ever going to be surprised if we don't know it's coming? You know what I'm saying? That's another thing. I, I don't appreciate you saying that, Jonas. Uh, you know, I have to say at this point, I just don't like the cut of your jib, sir. I don't like the direction this interview is going. <laughs> That's right. This is a, you know, I, I, this, this guy's obviously a speciesist. Yeah, he's a okay. What's the deal? What's yeah, the deal? He, I don't know what the problem is. I mean, it's just like we're we're giving and we're giving. You know, we just keep, <laughs> we keep giving and he just keeps just taking a giant dump on us. I don't know. I, I just feel weird about it. You know, I feel yeah. great. Yeah. You know, I think we'll just end it there then. I don't like your tone anymore. Oh, now, wait a minute, Jonas. Before, before we go, I wanted to, uh, you know, like I say, we can feel emotions. And right now, uh, you're feeling a little bit uh, queasy about uh, your aunt's uh, domestic uh, hand-washing abilities. Yeah, and, and actually, you know, it's funny that you say that because what I'm getting from him is that he's imagining a friend of his uh, uh, dressed up like a like a turkey dinner, and he might, like like in the cartoons, like he's maybe mm-hmm. gonna eat his like he's gonna eat his friend. Don't eat your friend, Jonas. Once once again, guys, you have an amazing ability. I was thinking about Thanksgiving at my aunt's house, and after dishes, she couldn't properly wash her hands. They were yeah. dirty. I mean, we had to cut yeah. one of them off. Yeah. We got a red hot poker. We fucking seared her off at the wrist. I mean, it was sure. a very uh, unfortunate day. Well, I mean, but uh, you know, just like the old Buddhist story, who knows if it's uh, if it's if it's good news or bad news until later. Maybe one day she'll need uh, to hook something with her hook that she now has, <laughs> and she wouldn't have been able to hook it before. One day the family will be at one side of a giant gully, and there'll be a rope, and and Aunt, yeah. Aunt Mahamaluka will hold all of us and use her hook hand to fly across the gully and save our lives. Exactly. With a name like Mahama Luka, you're expecting her to save your life at some point. Well, the, I know I know the Hawaiian language, and that's Hawaiian for uh, jumps into uh, underneath a trampoline. You jump into underneath a trampoline? That's a fucking amazing yeah. ability. I like it. Yeah, yeah. It's weird that they have one word that means that. Yes. <laughs> like one, like one, one single word like, like that they needed to come up with a word for that. It's strange. We've turned this interview around. You're my two favorite cows in the world now. I'm so glad you called in. Oh, oh we, we really appreciate uh, appreciate the time and appreciate you coming around on your uh, backward views on our species. I was yeah. a, I was a cowcist before you guys called. That's our cow racist. Sure. Um, but sure. now I think I've changed my ways. 
Oh, I'm we know. My ways. Now I'm a cow lover. A cower. Maybe a coward would be the problem. Well, you know, the turncoats are the best zealots, they say. You know, like, mm -hmm. once you turn it around, you're you're just, you're as pro-cow as you were anti-before, and we, are, yeah. we appreciate your support. He's with us for life now. I am. Yeah. I yeah. am. Yeah. We're going to have to send him one of the hats that we have. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, what do yeah. they look like? I want to I wanna know. Uh, they have, uh, they're, they're about, uh, about two and a half feet tall, uh, and, uh, but, but only about three inches wide, uh, they just, uh, it's really, uh, just attached to a headband. What is that, what do we have on, written on the headbands now, Terry? Yeah, uh, the headband is in big neon letters. It says, uh, crying is the best, uh, tool. Oh. <laughs> Excellent. So it's Excellent. like a headband with a broomstick on it. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we have it delivered by a, a, a gray, gray uh, poltergeist. Oh. Yeah. And it has a, um, a faucet on it, and uh, it, it has it holds about a gallon of pure uh, estrogen. Wow, you you guys have bottled estrogens as cows at a farm? How'd you figure that out? Uh, so maybe he doesn't think we're capable of doing things like this, Frank. Um, yeah, I, I, it, sounds, it sounds to me like he just thinks that we're, we, we have no ability for science. It's, no, it's, no, no, no. Frank, Frank and Terry, Frank and Terry, Frank and Terry, let, let me stop you right there. I just want to know how you do it without thumbs. Oh, okay. Well, he's asking how we overcome our natural uh, disability. Um, instead of thumbs, we use uh, Christmas. Oh, <laughs> we, you know, we receive uh, most of our science as a gift uh, yeah. every year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had a friend who used Christmas to do a lot of things, mainly, uh, <laughs> mainly uh, so, crying and suicide. But you know, sure, sure. <laughs> you know, it's a, that, that, those are those are those are booming industries that time of year. Well, uh, you know, so many people commit suicide because of all those Christmas carols that mention it. If they just wouldn't write so many Christmas carols that dwell on taking your yeah. own life. Yeah, mm -hmm. Silent Night, that noose is not tight enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my Jing favorites. Yeah, Jingle Pills. <laughs> <laughs> jingle Pills. That's a, that's a great <laughs> anthem. I love, I love, like, the hook on that. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and, uh, God, God rest ye hoes in the closed up garage. <laughs> that's, that's my favorite. That's absolutely my favorite one. Gorgeous. Uh, and you guys heard Silver Bells, right? Yeah. Sure, sure. Does, it, does that one have something in there about suicide? Uh, no, I'm just saying <clears throat> there's an alternate version that's become popular, and it's, uh, it's called uh, Gun Pointed in Your Eye. Oh, it's very yeah. similar, I see. Yeah, yeah. And, and also, frankly, the original Silver Bells is really about suicide if you <laughs> swallow a large Silver Bell. <laughs> it can't cause a problem, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Man, death by Silver Bell. I, I, sure. I've seen it a million times. Well, before we let you guys go today, uh, Frank and Terry, you guys have anything else you want to say to the Crazy Town listeners? <laughs> Uh, that goes that goes double for me. Oh, I like it. All right, guys. Well, thanks for finding cell phones, phone booths, all that shit, discussing all your uh, disabilities, your enhancements to life, your secret powers. We may have to have you on again sometime. But thank you so much for calling in today. Oh, Take care, you, you guys, you guys have a great one. You too, buddy. Thanks, man. So, so Kate and Jeff, what what do you guys think about those cows? It's weird how quiet we got while they were talking. Yeah, I was just so stunned that they were talking cow. They just couldn't say a word. Every time I've talked to a cow, I'm usually quiet, except for today because I'm like hosting a show, so I had to talk to him. Normally, I'm in awe. <laughs> sure. Yeah, well, you, you had to work a, through your stunned silence. But we you didn't. figure yeah, if a cow's going to start talking, you kind of want to give it some room because yeah. you've got to know what it's going to say, I guess. Yeah. When I was growing up, I always thought they were talking all the time, and then my parents told me they're they're just chewing. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Have you guys ever heard the other rendition of S Silver Bells? The I got a gun in my eye. It's very beautiful. No. Yeah. I don't know that. I don't know that. I I, like... I did I did read um away a, a in a sealed up manger uh, <laughs> with uh, a cyanide pellet in acid. Whoa. Um, yeah, yeah, that's um. <clears throat> that's always great when you when you hear the carolers go around the neighborhood. <laughs> It's a very uplifting night when they come around singing that one. Yeah. And then there's a, I wish you a merry uh, head detonation. 
I've I've laid in my bed on Christmas Eve listening mm-hmm. to the Head Detonation song so many times. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah or 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 uh, deck the halls with bathtub toasters. Is <laughs> uh, really a, a a sweet one. Mm-hmm. Well, that is about all the time we have for today. Uh, I do want to thank everyone for listening. Uh, please share this follow us send us what you fucking hate about the show we definitely want to know about it once again jeff and Cade from super pb time you guys are fucking awesome everyone their show is great it's hilarious improv podcasting uh once guys you have anything else to say tell people where to check your shit out go whatever you want to say no just uh once again just come find us on twitter at super pb time and just listen wherever you're listening to this podcast we're on that too so come check us out yes, i promise indeed. it's not like anything else it's not like anything else it's very very awesome if you guys haven't heard it you have to at least give one episode a try so um once again our website is the crazytown.com you can follow us on twitter at at the crazy town pod uh Give us a review on iTunes, SoundCloud.com, whatever else you guys want to check us out at. It's all listed on thecrazytown.com. Uh, for Jeff and Cade and Jonas, we are out. Mm-hmm.